Well, hello. Hello. Welcome to Playbill Live with Felicia and Mark. I'm Mark Pikert, Editor-in-Chief of Playbill. And I'm Felicia Fitzpatrick, the Social Media Director. And today we have a very special guest star. Yes. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to do a drum roll. <laughs> Nico Annan <laughs> is joining us from Stars' P Valley. Yes. Uh, if you have not seen Stars' P Valley, I don't know why I have to say the, like, the full thing. Roll with it. If you have not seen Stars' P Valley, you are missing out because it is, I watched one episode and I was like, oh, I, I have to have every single person from the show do something because it is a wild ride and overseeing all of it with glee and delight and the best dialogue of any TV show right now is Nico. So I'm very excited to get to talk to him about playing Uncle Clifford. Uh, and yeah, I'm obsessed with the show. So I have no compunction about saying that. But first, we have Which to talk- high praise. Uh, we have to talk about what's going on in the world of the theater. Not much. The theater. Uh, yesterday, Godspell began previews at the Berkshire Theater Group, which is the first Yay. equity approved, or it and Harry Clark are the two first equity approved shows to resume performances. Yeah. So hopefully everything goes well and everyone's happy and enjoys it and no one gets sick and we can make this the new normal for as long as it needs to be. Right. Ah, I saw the photos that people were posting from up there and it's exciting and weird and scary, but like for steps. I love seeing the photos of Broadway celebrities wearing the Playbill mask. Uh, Playbillstore.com, yeah. And those are available at Playbillstore.com. There you go. Playbillstore.com. Yeah. Dot com. My right. I've got my microphone right here. Oh, look at you fancy. Yeah, I'm very professional. Wow. Why are you so surprised by this? Well, I just didn't think you'd use it for Playbill Live, but honored that we get some special treatment around here. We have the star of Stars' is P Valley on the show today. <laughs> yes, I'm fucking You had to pull out all the stops. You had to pull My out all the stops. I get it. I understand. I understand. Uh, once again, we have some giant news. I can't wait to tell everyone, but we do not have approval to announce it yet. Ugh. So sad. But it's gonna be good. I mean, look, it's gonna soon the world will know. You know, I wanted to really I wanted to announce it last week. I couldn't, but then we had Broadway Bears to distract us. Did you watch Broadway Bears? I missed it. You can't lie, you know. What? You can't lie. I did, I saw it and I loved it. Wow. Uh the opening number was so cool. It was everybody in their separate places and it was edited together. Is very sexy and chic and fun. And then so many great numbers from previous installments. Uh, there was the lacrosse number, which has been a personal favorite of mine for several years. A personal favorite of mine for several years. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Jane Krakowski dropped by and she said, Jane. Hello, I'm Jane Krakowski. And when I'm not on camera, you can find me on the Broadway. Did you inspire her? Uh, yeah. You're Moira Rose? I love that. Oh, no. Did you not know that Jenna Maroney is based on me? That, you know, the few episodes I've seen of 30 Rock, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I was the star of a sitcom uh, co-starring Tina Fey in the late 90s, I guess. Wow. Anyway, I was not at my most professional back then. I was going through a lot, and I thought yeah. that I was owed a lot, and it was just all about me. And you know, I've really matured and grown since then. And the the pilot didn't go anywhere, but uh, I guess Tina Fey sure got plenty of material from it. Apparently. Did you get first right of refusal for 30 Rock? Uh, no, I did audition. Mm -hmm. uh, they went in a different direction. It happens. Oh, wow. That yeah. was good. I'm sorry. Yeah, you would have been great in that role. At some point, I'm going to sit down and figure out the trajectory of my life and career based on these conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Ending really with the share show. What? I've, I've really lived. Right, well, and you have yet to do your alternating repertoire. What? What's the, um? you're gonna do Streetcar Named Desire and something else in rep. Oh, Streetcar Named Desire and Gypsy? Honestly, I'll take it, can't wait. Well, look, now we're full steam ahead on Angelica Squared about Angelica Schuyler and Angelica Houston. 
Right. So I'm really putting my uh, energies there. Can't wait. Uh, I'll be there. Well, opening night. Oh. Uh, Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say we didn't discuss the Emmy Award nominations last week, and it was oh. stacked with theater people. Billy it really Porter, was. obviously. Uh, Leslie mm -hmm. Odom Jr. got a voiceover nomination for Central Park, which is a mm -hmm. fantastic series on Apple TV that I love. Mm -hmm. uh, Jasmine Cephas Jones, yep. her pops, Ron. Um, yeah, there was a lot. Um, Bette Midler? Am I making that up? Yeah, for, Bette Midler. Yeah. Um, like no, there were many. No Rose Byrne for Mrs. America, which was a bummer because she was so good as Gloria Stein. She was. A play but live alum. Um, yeah, there was a lot. And I know it's not directly related to theater, but Schitt's Creek got a lot of noms, which is like a fan fave. For I us. mean, we love Schitt's Creek. We do. We do. And I finished the morning show, which was nominated for a lot of Emmys. Billy Crudup is wild in that show. First of all, Billy Crudup is one of the sexiest men I've ever seen in real life. Do you remember when he came to the office and everyone was just like... Oh, I do. Hello. I do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, And he's so brilliant on that show. I just want to model my entire career after what he does. Understood. No, his he was like... His, the way he was so, like creepily peppy during the whole thing was just like so <laughs> such a good contrast for the rest of the world but um yeah a lot of emmy nominations don't, don't i elicit the same reaction when i'm creepily peppy some days yeah he's like you can't trust it what's going on you can't trust it you should never trust me peppy no <laughs> um but yeah there was it was great I, there's so much tv happening right now and i simply can't keep up I mean, I watched all, in the last week, I watched all three seasons of Fargo. Oh. I'm in it to win it. Okay. I'm going to. You really? I, I mean, but I guess you just, you can go, go, go as much as you want. Like, we know my classic tale, waiting for my roommates to all be in the living room together to watch the shows we need to watch. And that's why I need to just start establishing shows for myself that I can watch when they're not around. You have to. And I would recommend starting with Playbill Social Selects. That's Playbill Social Selects, a new bespoke service that provides you with back, backstage opportunities mm -hmm. with theater offerings. Yesterday was a theater murder mystery. Ooh. Uh, that would be, I would play a murder mystery game with you. I think that would be fun. It'd be like real life clue. Can you imagine? I would be utterly yeah. deranged. Also, I'm so competitive. Are you in a game setting? I don't know this about you. Oh, do you not know? Yeah, when I moved to New York to go to college, my mother's two pieces of advice were don't lose your temper and don't ever play games with anyone. Dang. Okay, oh, then thrown, skip. Skip. I've thrown backgammon sets across the room. I've flipped over Monopoly boards. Uh, my best friend beat me at Go Fish and I struck her across the face. Are you are you joking now? And I was 20. You're, this is a bit. When you <laughs> no, bit? ask Reagan. Okay. I like can't be competitive at games because I never win. So it doesn't behoove me, is that the right word, to be competitive. So maybe we'll make a great board game playing team. Well, you're a real Hufflepuff. I am at that. I am at that. Just and loyal and fair. Yeah. And I'm mm. Gryffindor. Up for debate. Still don't know what any of these words mean, but I repeat them with confidence. It sounds like I'm very smart. I mean, you know what? You get to choose for you. So if you want to be a Gryffindor, I can't take that away from well, you. Well, I didn't choose for myself. I took a quiz. What quiz? Which one? BuzzFeed. No, you have to do it from Pottermore. I don't know. what. Fine. Anyways. Anyway. Um, uh, so Playbill Social Selects. Also, uh, submissions are now closed for Playbill Search for a Star, which blew up the final day. I think we got okay. 1,500 submissions in a day. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now we're over 2,000, like 500 or something like that altogether. It's wiggity wild. And I was going through the the hashtag on Instagram, like to, you know, in, engage as playable. And they're so good. And I'm like, I'm so happy I'm not a judge because they're going to have a hell of a time choosing, like a top it's 10. It's going to be wild. Wild. And so Search for a Star is wrapping up, but... We just announced this week 
that Heidi Schreck and Rebecca Naomi Jones are going to host the Women in Theater uh, Centennial Celebration Concert on Playbill.com, August yes. 26th. I'm so excited. We Just haven't announced any of the talent yet, but I, I know who's confirmed and it's real good. I'm, I can't wait. It's gonna be a thrill. So it's part concert and then part uh, talking heads and people celebrating the trailblazers and the up and comers. Uh, it's gonna be really, really great. August 26th, I'm, and plus like Heidi Shrek and Rebecca Naomi Jones, done, yes. Oh, I, yeah. I know. Rebecca Naomi Jones was actually um, the Yitzhak I saw for Hedwig, because I saw Tay, as we know. And uh, she was fantastic in it. And then of course, Oklahoma, but and significant other. So I guess I've seen her a lot, but like her being my Yitzhak just holds a special place in my heart. I yeah. think she's great. And Tay Diggs also holds a special place in your heart. Obviously. I mean, so I, this is a safe space to confess this, but um, I saw The Best Man for the first time. I'd never seen it. Uh, my friend Janelle showed it to me and it was so good. He is such a little, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything for this movie from 1999 that probably everyone else has seen, but he's, it's a time. I'll just say it's a time. I just rewatched Chicago. <gasps> I want to watch I want to rewatch that too for the glossary. Yeah. One, it's so good. It still holds up. Two, he is so good in that movie and he so is. like chic and sleek and sexy. And With I'm a little bore here head, yeah. for it. Yeah. Shout out to Tay. What else? Yeah. I miss him every day. Uh, it's BT and AT before Tay and after Tay. That's how you divide life up. That makes sense. Yeah. I feel like I would do that as well. I'll never forget How that day. Felicia and Mark got their grooves back. Hey. Yeah, we did. <laughs> after that, after that Instagram live, we were like, whew. But anyway. I had, to, um, I had to cool, I had to fly to Texas to cool off. Did you fly to Texas after that? Yeah, I had the funeral. Oh. But you had that oh, memory I, of Tay to hold on to. I had the memory of Tay and I just stayed drunk that whole weekend, so it was fun. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people who fly home to Texas for things like that probably feel the same way. I think. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, Should we bring our special guest on? I was gonna say enough about us because we're getting real rambly now. We've re we've been reduced to remember when. And that's never that's a slippery slope for us. That's a slippery slope. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna bring Nico on. Hey. Hey, hey, what's up? There you are. Hi. What's good? What's good? <laughs> what's good? What's good? I really have to say I appreciated your energy while you were in like the waiting room because we could see you. And I was just like, he's laughing at our jokes. He thinks we're funny, <laughs> funny which is like what we need to fuel our fire. <laughs> you are most welcome. You are most welcome. You guys are cool. You're cool. Okay. Ah, okay. Felicia, not, not when you react like that. <laughs> I, I, I cool is not in my in my repertoire. That's I call repertoire. that facial expression of Felicia's. I can't wait to journal about this later tonight. That is that is absolutely correct. <laughs> I'm not mad at that, Felicia. Go ahead, do what you got to do to stay sane in these Thank days, you. baby. Stay mm -hmm. sane. Yeah. Self care. Yeah. Good morning, y'all, or good afternoon for y'all. It's morning for me. Oh yes, good afternoon for yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mark, take it uh, away. You are. Yeah. Oh my god. Huh? No, I was going to say congratulations on P Valley and a second season renewal. That's so awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Very, 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 very excited about that. Uh, so you've been playing Uncle Clifford on and off and on for since two thousand and nine with the first workshop, right? Yeah. First workshop was over uh, at the Lark Theater. Where Katori was, uh, when she was in uh, the writer's residence program, I'm not naming it properly, but it's a it's a it's a writing program that the Lark has, uh, and it was, she was writing. She was the Pony Award winner, I remember at that time, and um, started off at the Pony Apartment reading four pages it was like half of a scene, yeah. And wow. then it just kept snowballing from there and there. Was, okay, so before we get too deep into <laughs> P Valley, uh, I should say 
for those of you who have not seen Pea Valley, it is a show set in the dirty delta of Mississippi, uh, mostly at the Pink Nightclub. That's pink with a Y. <laughs> the Pink. And, um, and Uncle Clifford is the non-binary uh, proprietress of the pink, who, uh, like Miss Mona in The Best Little Whorehouse of Texas, looks out for all her girls. <laughs> yeah. And there's a newcomer, and then there's the star, and the star is retiring, but maybe she can't, and the newcomer, and there's drama, and everybody has secret lives, and everybody is sweaty and horny and sexy. How are you feeling this Friday afternoon, Rod? <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, you know, talking about Tay Diggs got me all riled up. I can't help it. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Listen, it's the summer, so everyone likes a little bit of hot chocolate. So, yes, <laughs> P Valley is all of those things. It's all of those things. Um, it's like a, a Pandora's box, you know? You get to see all of these people that come in and out of the club that my character, Uncle Clifford, owns. Um, and it's really more, it is a strip club, but the show is about the lives of these people. The show is about the socioeconomic uh, structure of this South and uh, this town. Um, the strip club is just literally the place where it takes place. Mm. The Pank is an actual character in the show. So that's the way I like to, the, to think about it or encourage audience members to think about it because sometimes so many people have different biases uh, about what strippers' lives may be or what non-binary people's lives really entail and how they love and why these men, even these cis heterosexual men work at the club and visit the club. And yeah, it's, it's very different. It's a different culture because down south, uh, People go to the strip clubs for baby showers and go for like weddings, uh, <laughs> bridal parties and stuff like that. So it's a different kind of situation. Well, I think what one of the key things, oh, sorry. One of the key things that sets the series apart and what makes it so different from what you might expect a show set at a strip club to be is that every episode is directed by women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and every episode was directed by women, but even Beyond that, I know that they interviewed um, male directors as well because it wasn't something that was set out that we only want women. It was something I think that kind of evolved because the the vision of the show, it had to be told through the female gaze. So because that was inherent in the script and in the words that Katori wrote um, and the whole team of writers uh, in the writer's room, they really pushed certain kinds of images and those images were written in on the page. You know, people people ask questions sometimes, but I'm like, no, it's written on the page. Legs dancing in, on, in the ceiling like crickets. It is described. So mm. I believe the questions and the interaction with the directors were more so, what is your interpretation of the female gaze of this moment? That type of thing. And sometimes people are, uh, pe the, the women that got the job, I guess they articulated that the best. You know, I wasn't in there in the meetings, but I did work with each and every one of them. And it was cool. It was cool. It was so different. Um, you know, you get to just see women take ownership. I, as a man, I got to, I witnessed sometimes the, the fight that women have to have uh, to be taken seriously, um, to have an opportunity to even get their thoughts out. And I don't think it was anything malicious, but I think sometimes people are accustomed to working in a certain way. And when you get freshness and, and newness, it was like, oh, let me let me sit back. Yes, what do you, yes, speak. You know what I mean? So it was really cool. Um, I, I want to know too, like you've been with this character for so many years at this point, like what was something you felt like you discovered translating the character to the screen in this way? I, it's been I, 2009, like when we started this, but I feel like Uncle Clifford constantly, I'm learning her. You know, she prefers the pronouns, she, she identifies with the pronouns she and her. Um, and even that process was a journey for me um, because the character evolved um, over time from the, the, the different drafts of the workshops and into the full uh, production that was done at the Mixed Blood Theater. Um, in 2015, but when it came to the TV show, it just was a little more intimate. So hmm. the, the, the discoveries for me was more so about 
the freedoms that just happen when you let go of character, you know, and, uh, and of ideas and the beauty of the medium of television is that the camera is just literally the fly on the wall. So it was great. It was great. And, it, you know, a lot of the other actors in the show uh, come from the theater as well. So there was, uh, our show is actually kind of like a little theater troupe. <laughs> you know, that's how like our, our cast and crew, we kind of were working. And that was different for some people um, that had done just straight TV, um, even from the, the production and crew side. They were like, what are y'all doing? Like, we, we're all in the, in the locker room, like <laughs> working and like working on like isolations. And it's like, oh wait, we're doing this in front of crew members, like, oh. You guys have to be comfortable with this. Are you okay? Everybody okay? You know, booties are going boom, 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 boom. No, 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 you gotta pop it. You know, learning how to do all those things. Right, <laughs> and the dramaturgy. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But you know, to do a show like this, you know, you need to really be comfortable in your body to be able to, to do the things that you do and, and honoring and respecting the work that these women do. Uh, I think another one of the things that sets us apart, the show uh, apart is the athleticism. Of, of the women, it is not. Yeah. <laughs> Mark was like, oh yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it is truly its own Cirque du Soleil. It is, it is acrobatic, it is art. Um, and I love like watching the reviews that people do on YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah. Because in the pandemic, it's like, I can't really connect with everybody. And <laughs> it, this is a medium that we are using to be able to touch and, and agree with one another. You know, I was telling one of uh, Brandy the other day, Brandy Evans plays Mercedes uh, on the show. And we were talking and I was like, you know, it's like doing theater, like, when I'm on stage, like when we were doing Hot Wing King, I can remember, you know, the audience when they lean in, when they, when they gasp with you, when they, mm, 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 or when they're laughing, whatever. And as an as an artist, you you can feel that, you can feel that communication. But in this medium right now, and especially because of the pandemic, no one, we don't have big screenings, we didn't have like a big premiere and those things. Mm -hmm. So being able to interact with the audience through social media has really, really, really been cool. People were like, oh my God, you responded. And I'm like, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you wrote something, I, I, <laughs> you, <laughs> you bad enough to write something, I'm bad enough to reply. Like, what's <laughs> up, what's good, you know? So it, it, it's fun to be able to interact with the audiences in a different way, you know? It's a world that we are all in, in, in theater in general. And I think for me, I'm like, let's just be open to it. Let's be open to it. Let's be open to the change because it's a way that we can correct some of the things that have gone wrong in theater uh, and new ways that we want to embrace. So, yeah. Yeah. Or, and I am obsessed with, the, I'm obsessed with the dialogue, especially Uncle Clifford's one-liners and snappy comebacks because you are making a feast out of this Katori Hall dialogue <laughs> and I am living for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's funny. Uh oh, they cut the grass. Sorry, they cut grass. <laughs> it's real, y'all. It's really real. Uh, but it's crazy, Mark. You know, I people have been talking about these one-liners, but I actually I never thought of them like that. I never thought in playing them. I never thought of like one-line zingers and stuff like that. So it has been people's reaction has been an acting tool for me. It's like keep doing what you're doing. You know, you know, don't think of it like the one the you know, the, the bo -bo -bo. No, that's, yeah. that's what makes the comedy so genius is mm -hmm. you're playing it so straight. Yeah. Uh, in terms Ow. of, in terms Ow. of the dialogue. <laughs> Uncle Clifford is very straight. It's just a different path. Yeah. <laughs> I also have never wanted to eat at a strip club more in my entire life. <laughs> are you serious? Where are you from originally? Texas. Okay, Felicia, where are you from? Texas and West okay. Coast. Both. Okay, I'm from Detroit. So in Detroit, the strip clubs were known for their steak. Like people would go to the strip clubs for like the steak and like steak salad and da -da -da, whatever. Um, at, at the pink, people, they come to the strip club for the wings, you know, the, the, the chicken wings can be a little flavored with a couple of things, you know. Uh, <laughs> and, and one of the characters, Lil' Murder, he comes up with a recipe 
you know, I don't know where you are. I think you are on episode one, two. Where are you, Mark? Four. Okay. I've I watched through four. Okay. Felicia, have you? No, it's a long story, but no, I haven't seen any episodes it's, yet. It's okay. It's okay. We, no, we won't, we you. will not, we will not put you on the stake. Well, okay. But no, it's, it's, it's weird too, because I had tickets to see Hot Wing King the f okay. weekend that quarantine started. So I was like, the universe is just like, I needed to meet you first, maybe before I could engage <laughs> in this work. I don't know. But anyway, keep going. But Hot Wing King, Hot Wing King was that we did over at the Signature. That was another mm -hmm. one of Victoria's plays that you're talking mm -hmm. about, but it was, um, it was another kind of a world. It wasn't the, the paint. It wasn't peace that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, but it was, it was, it was very, very, very good. It was a family drama and another world that looked at black gay men and, and intimacy and, and the relationships between fathers, friends, sons. It was, it was a very powerful piece. It was one of those things that did a lot for me as an actor, especially Having lived in New York for so long, like from, you know, early mm. 2000s, 90s, you know, and then coming out here to L.A., it was just like, oh, New York stage has room for me now. Mm. They, have, they have room for the type of characters that I am interested in playing in terms of the canon of, for me as an artist um, and my voice, um, characters that I can relate to and that I feel that represent people that look like me um, and, and could relate, you know? Just as a different entry point. I'm very grateful for like the, the theater and pieces that, that encompass characters on the LGBT spectrum. Um, but most of my New York stage career, I was playing straight characters, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that is fine because that's what I do as an actor is tell stories, you know? But to be able to, as a gay man myself, actually tap in to roles that were on the, all, the, all the, the full spectrum, you know, from the most feminine to the most masculine and defy all of the stereotypes that people have with those. It's really important, you know, with the voices that uh, authors and playwrights are putting out right now to be able to have people that reflect that, that truth and that range. So it was awesome, it was great. Yes. Uh, I need All to right. come back. <laughs> Anytime. I love the theater, so this is cool. We're running out of time, so final question. Already? Yeah, yeah it's, only been, it's almost half an hour. <laughs> you, you're uh, too quick with it. You know, you don't do nothing in a little half hour. That's not how you really do it, Felicia. That, tell them. that ain't how you do it, Mark. See, that's why you clutching pearls and stuff. You on that quickie life. You got to get with it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Nico. <laughs> that settled down. Come on, play the list. Yeah. <laughs> Mom. What have you been watching in quarantine? <laughs> Do you really want to know what I've been watching in quarantine? Are you really ready for that? I'm ready. Okay. Well, it's, I was about to say something so inappropriate and as a joke, and I was like, this is live. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I've been catching up on like all the shows that I haven't had time to see. Felicia, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm, I'm, try I'm trying to settle. Okay. Um, I've been catching up. Uh, I finished my Ozark. Uh, I finished Ozark mm -hmm. season three, which was everything was great. Uh, Disclosure. Uh, on Netflix, that documentary, it was amazing. And it was so, um, to see how things were done in the past and how wrong they were, you know, because voices weren't necessarily even out there to advocate for certain things or, or the industry wasn't even listening in a space to listen, you know, that's one of the things I think is just so powerful about this time and watching Disclosure in this time, everybody is listening. Everyone is listening. People have been stripped of privilege uh, of doing their daily activities. So they are more open to different ideas. I think that's one of the reasons that also it's divine that P-Valley is coming out at this time, you know, on SARS, because it's, it's a world that's so different from many different people in the country, but it's, it's humanity that we all can connect to, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I'm um, watching that and what else am I watching? Oh, I, I'm catching up on my guilty pleasure, Fear of the Walking Dead. Mm. Yeah. 
I've always loved, I, that was a show, the whole franchise, I was like, oh, I don't want to watch zombies and blood and guts, this is disgusting. And then I just got into it. I got into it, I was living in Queens at the time and I got into it. I was just like, yo, the psychology that these people going through. <laughs> you know, I was like, would I do that? Mm, she may have to go, she may have to get it. Like, die, bye, you know, <laughs> gotta survive. So I like that. So those are, that's pretty much what I'm watching. And of course, P-Valley, you know. Cool. Uh, are you still live tweeting episodes or is that just uh, every now and then? Mm -mm. I, because, like I was saying earlier with the engagement and connection with the audience, I, I'm, I'm on, I wasn't on Twitter a lot before the show and anyone that's following me at All Day Nico on Instagram or on Twitter, like you getting it while the show is on. What? <laughs> I, 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 you getting it while the show is on. I love the interaction and stuff like that. So I'm always like commenting back or, or, or replying. Sometimes even after the live tweet, after the airing of the episode, because of the, the West Coast, East Coast situation, I'll go back and I'm like, like when people tag Uncle Clifford or tag P Valley, I'm, that's usually what I look through and I'm like, oh, you nasty. Delete. I'm not saying that. <laughs> no, you can't have none. Boom. <laughs> you can't have it. Nah, nah, you know. <laughs> it ain't for you. You ain't ready. You ain't ready for this chocolate. You don't know about it. You know, so um, it keeps it fun. Um, and also it, it it's a way that I feel we're able, I'm able to personally just give a little bit of the insight because I think sometimes so many people see mm. the pizzazz, they see the show, the glitz and glam. And they don't really understand. It's no, I don't even want to say they don't understand. I want to say it's nice as an artist to be able to communicate my intentions behind my mm. art. You know what I'm saying? And have like many actor studio or whatever, you know, like just on IG, like, no, this is actually about this and the appropriation of my people. And Uncle Clifford is standing in the middle of the field because she is saying my people will not be a race. That is why she got that dressed up. That is why she did that. And she's standing on the soil of her ancestors. This is a cotton field talking mm -hmm. to this biracial man who is trying, who is dealing with, am I going to do this for my people, my, my, my heritage as an African-American, or I'm going to do this for, oh, you know. So I just think that it's really cool. Like, I like as an artist being able to use the fashion and um, the, the acting to, to, to just convey everything. It wasn't just the words, it was the words, the fashion, the hair, the body, you know. You put those heels on, you know, it becomes a dance. So, yeah. And the season finale is coming up, right? Too soon. Not too soon. You, we, we're only on episode four right now. So this Sunday is coming out with five. And we did eight. This season is eight. Yeah. They ordered 10 for next season. So you get a little more juice and a little more sauce on your wings. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you got to let live, people know. I was going to say, I want to live tweet the finale episode. That's going to be my goal. Like I'm going to be caught up and then I'll live tweet and then I'll tweet at you and be like, Hey, okay. I'm watching. <laughs> I just, I just want you to know, Felicia, it is a ride. Okay. Now you talked about Mark playing up. his yep. board games and you know, you're not being able to handle it. <laughs> you gotta be ready. Okay. Do you have okay. a pole in your house, in your apartment? Do y'all have a pole, practice pole? No. Okay, so you got. Well, I will, I'll borrow mine from Mark, I guess. Apparently, he has one. <laughs> it's collapsible. It travels. Okay, great. You need to get that. And Felicia, if Mark is using that pole for any of his customers or his uh, fantasy that night, <laughs> I need for you to just use your kitchen chair. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Use your kitchen chair. You know, a chair. A chair. Right. Come on, we all, okay. come on, rock with me, Felicia. Rock with me, baby. <laughs> rock with me. Yes. Yes. Baby, <laughs> See, I'm ready. I'll be ready for that. <laughs> I mean, you haven't started filming season two. Maybe Felicia could work at the pink for an episode. I'll be the new girl who has no idea what she's doing, and they'll be like, poor baby. Poor baby girl. Yeah, it'll be great. No, no. Well, you can't work at the pink. Great. Great, great. Amazing. Okay. I'll just be a customer. <laughs> I'll come for the steak, and it'll be great. Okay. There you go. You want to work in Twerk Town? Mark, I think you could probably work over in Twerk Town. I'm sure. I don't even know what Twerk Town is, but I'm sure he could. <laughs> I've visited, I've dropped by. 
Okay. Twerk Town is a part of the club that <laughs> we have the poles and on the stage, and then there's a part of the club that the girls have platforms, and it's, it's Twerk Town, and you know, they're dancing there. It's not necessarily pole work. And then we have VIP rooms, and everyone calls this room the cloud room. It's so crazy. The cloud room. <laughs> the cloud room is insane. It's the paradise room. It's the paradise room because all of your fantasies can come true there. There's a free inhibition. You can do and flip everything there. I love, and the production design, oh, it's so everything. Yeah. Jeff Pratt Gordon, he did that. It's, you know, and they're like, oh, it's just this show, you know, it's it's trap music, it's hip hop, blah, blah, blah. but it's like, oh no, it's art, my dear. This is mm. art. We are redefining what it is for you. Mm. It's one of the most gorgeous shows on TV right now. And it's, thank you. I love, I love genre TV that takes this concept and then digs into it and mm -hmm. talks about socioeconomic stuff, talks mm -hmm. about uh, surviving an abusive relationship, talks about sexual identity and all of that. And it's it's like a Trojan horse and you tune in for yeah. one thing and then you get fed all of this amazing stuff that you maybe wouldn't have sought out on your own. Mm -hmm. There is medicine in the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> and there's stuff in the wings. There you go, there you go. So you gotta fly, you gotta fly. All right, Nico, thank you so much for joining us today. This was so much fun. Yes. Yeah, anytime, guys, you know, I love what you're doing and I love, you know, reconstructing what our world as theater artists is looking like. So keep going. Well, thank you. And congratulations <laughs> again on season two of P-Valley. I cannot wait. Thank you. Thank you. Felicia, I'm going to see you on Sunday, eight o'clock. So, yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get my chair. I'll be uh -huh. ready. Okay, what, what's, what, what network are we coming on on, Felicia? Stars. Okay, what time? 8 p.m. Okay. I just want to make sure you're ready. Sunday. I, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm ready, but I will you, be present. <laughs> down in the valley where Felicia get naked. If you throwing bands, then you know she go shake it. Hey, one, two, check it. Three, My time four. does come out. I'm like, what? Because you're ready. Because you're ready. You're good and ratchet, baby. That's it. I love it. It's just a little punctuation. <laughs> it's just a little, yeah. It's a little punctuation. See, Gotta you can be it. classy and ratchet. All y'all watching at home, play little people. You can be ratchet and classy at the same time. Okay? Um, the message for today. Amen. That's words to live by. <laughs> Marcus, like, I've been saying this the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> that is a verbatim quote. You're right. <laughs> you can be ratchy and classy at the same time. Ooh, That's, right. That's right. All right. Thank you for joining us. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week.